They need to make them go to rehab and then not lock them up. You know, they got churches there, they got GED programs there. Help them get their lives together. I'm trying to reach for the stars and trying to slowly progress. But one day, like I want to express that I, I made it. It takes all your energy and all your effort to just do it and to just put everything together to get the first organ built. some water. Here's the water guys. Working with the homeless addicts just was second nature to me. You're welcome so just much. became something that Sorry, I'm meant to do. I mean, I actually feel that it's my mission. It's not too cold, but it serves a purpose. When I was involved in a car accident welcome, in 2001, buddy. broke my shoulder in five places, and they prescribed pain pills for it. My body started needing them, and I wasn't functioning. I'm not a person that does rehab very well. Went to Florida, got clean. And then I met the wrong person. <laughs> it was just a person who wasn't good for me or vice versa and started to lead me down the opiate path again. Here's a poncho and a clean t-shirt, dry t-shirt for later, all right? Then it just became a downward spiral of over four years of pure hell. I overdosed. I woke up to having paramedics and a cop standing over me. And the cop looked at me and said, you're lucky we're not busy today. I started in the corporate world way back in the early 90s. I got ill pretty ill before my age and I had very major surgery and the surgeon said to me usually it's because of a lifestyle and maybe it was time to reevaluate that lifestyle so I ended up quitting my corporate job and leaving my comfy six-figure salary I've always loved animals they're such unconditional loving creatures plus for me, it's a little bit of therapy too. To be around the animals, I have my three dogs and four cats and they're all gonna be there and they're not gonna judge me on what happened that day and they're not going to um, upset me about anything. They're just gonna be there because they wanna make me happy. Started dog walking business uh, in 2012. I hired dog walkers and pet sitters when I was working in the corporate world. I knew what I wanted out of them, so I figured why not give that to my clients. If I have eight employees, if one thing's been consistent, it's been the fact that we all become a family and we all become comfortable with each other and we all become familiar and are able to back each other up and have each other pack at all times. All right, buddy. Yeah. I'll see you. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Josh. Have a great weekend. Out. Thank you for Sunday. What size are those? You need 10 and a half? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I started working with people on the streets when I was 15 years of age. I've been doing it on what I consider to be a very full-time basis for the past four years. You got the Philadelphia 76ers on that? After many years of being on and off the streets, Eric finally made the decision to get himself into rehab and get some treatment and to get clean. For somebody to actually get to the point where they have realized that it is time to get off the streets, get off the heroin, get off the opiate, is when they have made peace with themselves and they become ready to become who they used to be. Day after day it was raining, I was wet, 
sick. My legs were like getting bad infected again. Are you done? Uh, I'm done. You're done. Uh, I, I'm done. I, I'm worn out. Uh, I, I'm tired. I, and, and I can't do this no more. I'm a human being and I deserve a chance at a good life. Right now I've been in the program going on 30 days. Okay, and how do you feel at this point then? Mentally, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting there. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's a lot of depression, you know, coming out of the fog, you know what I mean? I'm taking everything very slow. I'm accepting everything very slow. I'm not putting high expectations on myself. And for now, I'm good with that. Somebody like Eric or anybody that has uh, been in long-term addiction, they need to recognize what made them want to use on a daily basis. For Eric, he's going to have a lot of triggers. He's going to have a lot of memories that will bring him to places that were very uncomfortable. He needs to gain people around him who support him, yet they don't enable him. I'm gonna keep trying to contact with my family. I'll keep contact with them and I'll keep the door open. What do you need to do for them to understand the support you need? What do you need to give to them? I need to be honest. And I need to be honest um, with the help that I need. You can't build a house on sand, because if you build a house on sand, it's just gonna slide. And once I get my solid foundation, I'll be able to move forward. Everything is baby steps right now. What Eric realized at this point in time is that his next relapse could be the last. And I think that's something that's going to drive him to want to continue to get better. And I think at this point, you're on your way back. So welcome back, my friend. If y'all needed underwear, you could have just asked me instead of stealing it. I can't live out here anymore. I'm 34 years old, and it's just, it's too much anymore. The chaos and the bullshit and, and the lifestyle. How could anybody possibly want to live in that? There's something addictive about it. Yo. That we're supposed to be taking care of each other. And we're supposed to be behind each other, not behind each other with the knife out, waiting to stab them in the back. I got caught in a sting, um, which I must say, going two years out here without getting it in handcuffs is quite the feat. Bye, thank you. I caught, and as I was walking back, he just popped out from behind the wall and grabbed my hand and put me in cuffs. People suck, the drugs suck. It's just miserable, I'm tired. It's tense. Like, people just bully people. I'm a small little white girl, so it'd be easy to, to push me around, you know. I tried the two times to go away, like, it's frustrating. I will find any bullshit, dumbass excuse. Probably every addict does. Today, I mean, I would like to get over to Prevention Point and find out about the uh, methadone outpatient clinic. When I was on methadone before, it worked quite well for me. I was in school, I had a job, I had my own place. I was every bit of functional. I lived on this block for 21 years. My mom's a homeowner. I'm not gonna leave her stuck here. I refuse that because at the end of the day, we a team, and I'll be damned if people who had no respect for themselves or other people is gonna run, run me out of here. Kensington is a place that people were born and raised and don't have the opportunity to leave because that's all they know or that's their home and they can't afford anywhere else. Most of the people who are there in addiction aren't from Kensington. A crack pipe, this is everything. We just picked some up that was out here. The 
They have some very long-term residents in that community that have a really sour taste in their mouths about what's going on. A majority of them are done. They want this to be over. They want their neighborhood back. They come from under the bridge. They get high, they go into abandoned houses. They still walk around here high, dipping with my kids outside, kids across the street playing. They go to Prevention Point to get their clean needles and still they lay around here. Prevention Point is a joke. They don't got money for schools, but then they're making safe spots for them to get high for what, to come back out here to keep dipping when the children need it to improve the school systems. They feel a lot of the programs are just enabling the people there to continue to use and not get better. I just feel as though they look at it like they're not a problem because they're homeless or they're an addict and they got this wannabe disease that people label them having, but it's not a disease. It's not a, to me, it's not a disease no, at all. It's, not. it's, it's a choice. They need to make them go to rehab and then not lock them up. They got churches there, they got GED programs there. They got mechanical stuff there that they could do, open up a rehab in jail. Help them get their lives together. Anything good going on? Some good. All right, like what? Just pursuing treatment, just the fact that I am pursuing treatment. The last time that I talked to Kelly, she was not ready to get treatment. Talking to her today, she's at that point. She's hit rock bottom and she's ready. We, we talked about detox before and you talk about it again, you're afraid of that, huh? Yes. What's the fear in detox? It is a horrible experience. Really? I hate being dope sick. If there was a way to avoid dope sick, many of them would not be out here. Going clean isn't an easy task and doing it without having any type of opiate going through your system uh, will make you sick. It'll give you the chills, it'll give you the sweats, the fevers, nauseous, you can't sleep. It feels like somebody is ripping the insides of you out. However, once they get past that part, the rest is easy. This life isn't what you want. You're sick of it. Right. How long do I keep waiting before it kills me? Afraid of dying, huh? Honestly, up until like now-ish, I really didn't care if it did or did not. It has recently taken my brother. And how recent? Very. 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 Were you close? Yes. So it's hit home? Yes. Really close to home. So my brother fell asleep behind the wheel coming back from Kensington on the boulevard. The last time we talked about family and you were done, is we talked about your mom, where you were sad. We were talking about your brother, where you are angry. Two different emotions. Yeah, yeah, I was angry at her a little bit then too because of her decision to pull the plug. Can't be, because he'd have done it himself once he was capable of. Um, that probably would have been the first thing that he did with his ability to walk or use his hands again. He wouldn't have walked, so use his hands again. How are you feeling today? I'm still pissed. You're pissed? I'm mad. Okay. I did not know he was coming down here. If you are that f mangled, I know you get high. You know where to find me. So if I asked you then, you know, since in 60 days from now, where do you hope to be? Where do you hope to be? I'd say 30 days, but you haven't started. You have to get at that point. So 60 not days. Not here. Not here, but. God, I will hate myself if I'm not here. I really will. I will have a hard time if I'm still under this bridge in 60 days. So you really want to do the long haul. You want to go. Down. I am looking to do long-term methadone. Well, I'll tell you what. I hope 60 days from now I can actually visit you there. And... Me too. I've already done go. it. I've done it. It's not impossible. I am sending so much positive energy to you today and from the rest because I know you can do this. Come here. I don't want to <laughs> ah, sit. Off. You got it. Come here. You are amazing. 
I saw a different Kelly today. I saw some hope. I saw somebody that had a little bit more resilience in her than she did the last time and was ready to bounce back and make a difference, make a change. Good job. I noticed. That was a good one too, though. <laughs>
We started this program uh, when a Boy Scout, one of my Boy Scout Eagle Scouts was tragically shot and killed back in two, February of 2006. And he was an avid guitar player and his parents wanted to do something that we would give back to the community. We use music because it, music has more value than any other single activity. Music has been shown to help with cognitive skills. It helps relieve stress and tension that kids may feel if they're in low income and are in a world of denial where they can't have this and they can't have that. The most comment we get about that is the fact I built something for myself. I built my own musical instrument. This is our 80th anniversary celebration, and the most wonderful part of that is the governing board of the American Accordionists Association. We are a group of volunteers who just love our instrument. The accordion has given us so much joy in our lives that it's our pleasure to give back, and we love to see the young people learning and um, we get to see them year after year growing up and expanding their musical abilities and to see our friends again it's a wonderful reunion being from um, an ethnic uh, background I've, I've grown up in a, a Ukrainian community uh, all my life with children's groups and resorts and the Catskills and stuff like that. And actually from the age of 15 to 23 I had a house band or, or played in the house band at the resort. So I loved the folk music. It was all around me. I was in a folk dance ensemble until I played the accordion well enough that they threw me out of the ensemble and said, you're going to play for us, not dance in it. The accordionist with the United States Air Force strolling strings. It's too enjoyable to stop. Um, you know, I've been playing now 33 years and there's never a shortage of uh, performance opportunities and, and a great opportunity to, to make people uh, happy and, and enjoy music and, and have a good time. You know, there's some, some times when we might show up to a dinner at the chief of staff's house and uh, you know the there might be some tension between our leaders and, and the leaders of the visiting nation and then we'll go into the residence and perform a selection or two from that guest nations from the hometown perhaps of, of the leader and all of a sudden it seems like the tension goes away a little bit and we've been told that sometimes after we perform that's when some real discussion and, and progress is made so we we help to break that ice in a uh, very friendly way. Thank you.